Uh, next, under proclamations and recognitions, we have a presentation by the Morris Leatherman Company regarding the results of the recent uh, community survey. And uh, we will uh, be presenting this on the screen and with a PowerPoint. And this is our 2018 quality of life study in the city. And uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be back here with you uh, once again. Uh, to go over the, the results and when once again we have very positive results to share with the city. I apologize, I'm going to be taking drinks of water as I try to ward off the cold before Thanksgiving here. Just to review with everybody what we undertook for the city. And the methodology has changed, stayed the same over the course of 24, 25 years of doing surveys. We, do, we talk with 400 randomly selected residents across the community. The 400 sample uh, is projectable to within plus or minus 5% in 95 out of 100 cases. Um, people always ask, is 400 sufficient? The, the margin of error is based not on the percent of the uh, population being represented, but the size of the sample, as long as everybody has an equal chance of being included. So a 400 sample in the city of Shoreview or a 400 sa uh, sample across Ramsey County is plus or minus 5%. It was a longer survey. Average interview time was 31 minutes. We had 13% stay on the phone with us for over an hour this time of their own choosing. Um, it was, the survey was approximately 190 questions. This was the longer survey that we undertake for the city every five years. The one in 2015 was a shorter survey, only, only about 90 questions. Once we found them at home, no problem. 5% refusal rate, um, and what we do to keep that down, as you can see, the field work lasts almost a month. We stay in the field for a long time because what we're doing is setting up appointments because when you call somebody and ask, can you take a survey that's 190 questions long, it's not like, okay, it's now or never. It's when is it convenient for the person, not when it's convenient for us to give the survey. So if the person says, you know what, I have time tomorrow when the kids are at a rec program, call me, we'll set up an appointment. On this survey, 45% of the calls were, were interviews were completed setting up appointments. Um, and you can see it was done this summer, and everybody wants to know about cell phones and the breakdown. In this survey, 41% were cell phone only households, 9% were landline, and then the remaining 50% had both landline and cell phones. So before I go on with the results, any questions on methodology? Council? Excellent. So as we start the survey, we always start with uh, general questions, general perception questions, because we haven't talked about anything specific. And we normally start with how would you rate the quality of life in the community? This time around, for the purpose of this survey, because you're going to see a lot of historical data, the lime green is the color to focus on for the 2018 results. 97% rate the quality of life in Shoreview as excellent or good. 3% said only fair. Nobody has said poor uh, since uh, 2005 and 13 years. Now, you can see the stability between the excellent and the good. And what differentiates communities, because most people, if you think about it, live in a community that they at least think is good. If you don't think the community you're living in has a good quality of life, you're probably going to be looking for another community to live in. What differentiates communities across the metro area is the excellent rating. Because as we've talked about before, Minnesotans are very difficult graders. Excellent is a hard threshold to meet for a lot of people. The norm excellent rating across the metro area right now is 22%. So you're three times higher than the norm that we see. And since 2005, you're at the second highest at 60%. 60% excellent rating places the community amongst the top three that we have in the last three years. It is an outstanding rating. It continues to compare favorably with history in the community and comparably across the metro area. Now, what do folks like most about the community? This is also an open-ended question. 2013, 14% just talked about this is a good community. 
sense of feel, the sense of community. Now it's up to 22%. It's gone up 50%. It leads the list with one in five. 15% talk about it's quiet and peaceful. 10% uh, the friendly people. 8% rural and open spaces, schools. It's not till we get down to location that we have your quintessential suburban response. What people are reacting to in their core values are, are very small town uh, attributes in a community. The sense of community, the quiet, the people, the open space. Um, well, obviously Shoreview is in a suburban mecca of the metropolitan area. It really does retain that sense of small town attributes that people value. And thus, not surprisingly, you have such extraordinarily high excellent ratings. The city has done a great job over the years of managing that tension that comes with growth with keeping the small town values still in place that people respond well to. Now, if we ask what they like most, let's ask what the most serious issue facing the community. On this one, what we're looking for, and this is open-ended, we consider any time a concern comes in at 25% or higher that it's a major concern. If one in four residents coalesce around one response, we consider it to be a, a major concern. You don't have that. You have two that hit double digits. Uh, taxes is the same it was in 2013 down from where it was in 2010. Now taxes has yo-yoed over the years. Right now it is still a concern. It really boomed in 2016 during that um, presidential race, not because of the presidential race, but because of legislative races. People's concern on property taxes went higher with what was being discussed about with the Senate and House races for St. Paul. The norm on that right now is about 20 percent as a concern, property taxes. We'll look at uh, you know, it, so it is a moderate concern in the community. Growth, you still have about one in eight folks that are concerned about the pace of growth. It's a moderate concern. Everything else is single digits, lack of shopping, lack of businesses, traffic. But really what is stable and telling is the bottom, the nothing, the boosters in the community. They see no problems here. 27% this time, the norm on that is 9%. Uh, in a community. Normally about one in ten, you have almost one in three that see absolutely no problems with this in the city of Shoreview. How would they evaluate then the overall direction of the community? Ninety-three percent say that the community is going in the right direction. Five percent say it's off on the wrong track. Um, it, it, you're down four points from 2015. It's not statistically significant. The 97 percent was the high that we had uh, in 2015. The norm on this right now is 82 percent of folks saying things are going in the right direction. Uh, much more in line with where you were in 2004 being the norm. The 93 percent, you're one of four communities that break the 90 percent barrier uh, over the past three years of folks saying that things are moving in the right direction. Overall, what's the sense of community identity? It's always been strong here. This time around, 94%, up from 87% uh, in 2015. Statistically significant, though, increase of 9% on the very strong. And obviously, this is a key attribute when people are talking about small town values. They want that sense of community identity. Um, and this really goes further into how people are still connected um, and their values in the city when you have community identity. These <coughs> ratings are more typical of exurban and small town uh, Minnesota. The norm very strong across the metro area right now is about 17 percent. Where people feel somewhat strong, that's at the 70 percent level. But you've more than doubled the sense feeling that there is a very strong sense of com community identity here. Now, what's the most important aspect of the quality of life as they think about it? This is open-ended. And your folks are all over the board. <laughs> Two dominate, and then everything falls into single digits. Safety is the most important aspect of quality of life and the overall sense of community. <laughs> everything else fail, uh, 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 fails in comparison. 
schools, parks and trails, community events. So public safety is the key attribute, but that sense of community is key for one in five for the aspect of the uh, 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 most important aspect in the quality of life. Now, what needs to be fixed or improved for the quality of life? Well, first off, 13% said they couldn't think of anything, and 31% said absolutely nothing needs to be fixed or improved. Those are the, those are the boosters again. So does anything come in as uh, to give direction to the council and administration to look at for the future? Not really. What you have is you're kind of fine-tuning aspects in the community. Nothing comes in at, you know, one in five, one in eight, even 10% even of people saying um, this needs to be fixed or improved. Better street maintenance at 8%. And then we drop down to 4%. So there's nothing that's deemed as very important to fix in the immediate uh, near future. Is there anything currently missing? 61% between 17% unsure and 44% say nothing. Um, 6 and 10 folks say the city's pretty much complete. Once again, those that have opinions, it's just fine-tuning what's already here. Retail, um, and people are talking about very specific types. You know, they would go on and on. This, these, these uh, uh, questions are survey stoppers. Dining, people talk specifically about a, a restaurant they would like. Uh, Roos Chris was mentioned. Uh, Manny's bring it out here. All of those sorts of things. <laughs> Public transit comes up, community events, but there's nothing on both of these questions that deemed to need to be fixed, improved, or missing. You're only working to improve on the edges. Now, we went through a, a closed-ended list and asked folks for an overall evaluation of the quality of life components. And first off, how important are the components? Are they very important, somewhat important, not too important, or not at all important? What I have arrayed here is very important and somewhat important because, as you can see, the not to and not at all uh, are very small. You have a vast majority on all 10 of these attributes of people saying they're at least somewhat important. The lowest you have is public transportation, but it's 78% saying it's at least somewhat important. The charts are arrayed, though, at the very important uh, aspect. So not surprisingly, public safety leads the list. Schools, 8 out of 10. Parks and trails, open space uh, and lakes. Recreation programs, shopping, public transportation, community celebrations, and theater and arts. So it gives you a sense of priority as they're looking at the quality of life components. But really, it's only meant to give you a sense because the overall takeaway is everything's important on this list. So how do they feel that the city's doing on these quality components? It's a sea of blue instead of a red riptide. And I've put this on the chart in the position it was on the previous chart for importance. So public safety led the list, 97% rated positively here. The schools, 96% to 1 unfavorable. Parks and trails, 99 to 1. Open space, 91 to 9. The lakes, 94 to 6. Recreation programs, 89 to 7. Shopping opportunities, a little bit more negativity. This is where people were talking about what they'd like to see. Public transportation comes in second for negativity, 71 to 26. Community celebrations, very strong, 83 to 15. And theater and arts, 76 to 20. So as the list, the hierarchy of the very important goes, the city's doing extraordinarily well on those attributes that people deem very important to them. What about an overall evaluation of city recreation facilities? Still extraordinarily strong, 98%. Never going to get 100, hit 100%. Uh, deem the recreation facilities as excellent or good, 36% excellent. The norm overall evaluation on city recreation facilities, positive, very excellent and, and uh, good, is 88% with 24% in the excellent category. So once again, your recreation facilities are kind of the jewel in the crown and always have been. 
Going through the list of city services, I put back, uh, going back to 2013 on these for comparative sake. On police protection, it's gone back to the high that it's been in, in the last five years of 97 to 3, positive to negative. Fire protection, 97% positive, nobody rated it unfair. Or only fair or poor. Drainage and flood, flood control. The negative had doubled in 2015, 82 to 15. It's been halved back to what it was back in 2013. Building inspection. Um, in 2015, we had a lot fewer people willing to share an opinion with us. Once again, this is tapping in. All these people had, and had experience with it, but you're tapping into people's perceptions, what they're hearing in the community. Um, this time around, 86 to 3, the highest over the last five years. Animal control at the high that it's been in five years at 88% positive. Continuing, pond maintenance, 80% uh, favorable, up 12 points from 2015. Street repair and maintenance went down a little bit. It was 81 to 19, this time around 74 to 26. It compares to what it was back in 2013, and it still compares strong. It is your highest negative on city services, but the norm rating on this right now across the metro area is 55% favorable to 45% uh, unfavorable. So while it is something, an opportunity to look at, and it did lead that list of things that need to be fixed and improved with 8% earlier on and that open-ended, um, it hasn't reached the point that we've seen in other communities of a critical issue, um, but something to watch for the future. Trail maintenance, back up to 92%, up six points. Snow plowing, um, dropped in 2013 to 85%, 81% favorable to 19% unfavorable. Now, we did have a difficult winter. The norm on snow plowing, you're right at the norm we see right now, 80 20 uh, over the past 18 months. And winter snow plowing uh, did the same trend that we saw with uh, the snow plowing overall from 77 to 71. Um, that one varies depending on the amount of plowing some cities do of their trails. So when we come back and have the, to me this is the most important question on the survey, is where the rubber hits the road, where you consider your property taxes you pay and the services you receive, how would you rate that value? In 2015, the value was 89%. This time around, it's 82%. Um, the only fair and poor is 15%. What we look at on this one is typically a ratio. So 82 to 15, it's about five, five and a half to one. The norm on this is about two to one uh, because of the growing concern on property taxes across the metro area that has impacted people's overall value uh, judgment on city services. That's not the case here. That overall 82% is among the top five we have in the metro area over the last three years. Now, would they support a property tax increase to maintain city services? Um, you're getting close. Uh, you, you have a majority now. In 2013, we had 46% that supported a property tax increase to maintain. This time around, 51%. 42% um, still oppose. 8% are unsure. They want to know which services uh, need it and how much it would cost. So while the overall concern, there is a growing concern on property taxes, there is growing sentiment for a property tax increase to maintain. The norm on this right now, you're a little bit under. Uh, the, typically, it's between 60 and 65 percent support for a property tax increase to maintain city services. Um, but you've traditionally been under. Um, this one varies, uh, this was bounces all over, especially with the economy. During the recession in 2010, you were a little bit above. You had 40% supporting a property tax increase to maintain. Back then, the norm was 20 to 25% support. It wasn't that people didn't appreciate their city services. They simply couldn't afford them. Does the city do a good job of seeking input from residents? Absolutely. 
86% say yes you do, 6% say no, and 8% are unsure. I'm going to pair this with the next chart then also, because that's asking for residents' input. Do people feel that they can have a say about the way things are run in Shoreview? 76% say yes, 18% say no. Between the seeking of input and people feeling empowered that they can not only give input but have the ability to affect things, um, the city has very strongly rated. Um, this has gone down over the past three to four years as people are having more of a difficulty of separating the, having the ability to have a say versus have their way. And what I mean by that is you can come in and give them all the opportunity to share their opinions, but if you don't do what they want, they're still going to be unhappy. And they're still going to say, no, they didn't have the ability to uh, run, th run things or be heard simply because you didn't do what they wanted. The norm on this for the yes is 60% right now. The no is 35%. Um, so you compare very favorably to history, but also comparatively to what we're seeing in the metro area. Thus, the mayor and council ratings, 91% favorable to 5% disapproval. Um, and you can see the uh, strong approval now is at the highest it's been since 2010, with one in three strongly approving. Uh, and this is a ratio that we always look at because the uncertainty varies from community to community. The 91 to 5 places the, dish, the, the city of Shoreview at the top of the range for council and the governance portion. What about the administrative side with the city staff? Places the, this places the community within the top three. 88 percent favorable to 6 percent only fair or poor. But most importantly is both of them line up in the ratio and the attitudes of the uh, favorable and the unfavorable. People view the governance and the administration working hand in hand in this community. Um, you can always see a community is a little off kilter, shall we say, if the council's up here and staff and administration are down here or vice versa. In the minds of city shore, in, in, in the minds of residents of Shoreview, and this has been going on through the years, and why the community works so well, they're seen to fit together. There is no tension between governance and administration in the minds of residents. Contact with City Hall, you have a lot of folks contacting City Hall. 45% indicated they telephoned or visited City Hall. The norm on that is 32%. So you almost have 50% more people. Maybe the staff feel this. <laughs> but interestingly enough, with higher levels of contact, um, you have one of the highest ratings we have on the overall service rating of the last contact. For public service sector, we consider it to be a threshold anytime 80% rate the last contact positively. You have 97% rate of favorably, only 3%, only fair or poor. Going over to public safety, we went through this list close-ended and asked folks to tell us if uh, which one was their first concern and then did they have a second concern. Well, first at the bottom, 18%, one in five folks said none of these were a concern. And as a secondary, 29% uh, said they did not have a secondary concern. One leads the list as a primary concern, and it dominates the list, and that's traffic speeding, the dark red at 31%. As a secondary concern, though, it doesn't have the reach. You're either concerned about traffic speeding or you're not in the community. So 41, for a total of 40% is a, for a reach of this. Break-ins and auto theft, 13, total of 23% uh, reach. Drugs, 11%. 20%, youth crimes and vandalism, 11 and 13. Really the only one, and what we typically look at on this chart 
if something if if an item hits between 40 and 50 percent as a first or second choice to be a primary concern and traffic speeding reaches that threshold on the bottom end but i would put it up there as a concern to look at simply because there's so much intensity in that 31 percent saying it is their first concern now neighborhood patrolling this did bounce uh, back to what it was in 2010. Uh, this time around, 74% said they're comfortable with the, uh, there's about the right amount of uh, patrolling in their neighborhood. 1% said too much. They talked about stop sign violations or speeding in their neighborhood that they got ticketed for. But now the not enough has gone back to what it was in 2010. 24% indicating not enough. Now this tends to vary depending on a, uh, community's position to the metro to the the core cities with minneapolis and st paul um, with this with, with shoreview being you know a second ring suburb was to st paul the norm on this would be 10 to 15 percent um, so it is something to look at and what it does relate back to when we look ask the computer to do a, a pull the data look at those that say traffic speeding is their number one concern that almost lines up for a one for one on traffic mm -hmm. patrolling saying there's not enough in their neighborhood. The characteristics of the, com of the community. This is set up as a stoplight. Red means there's too many of this item. Stop. Yellow, about the right amount. And green, not enough, bring more in. You have very little red. There's only uh, th four items that hit double digits. Luxury rental units at 21%, higher cost housing at 15%, condominiums at 12, and affordable rental units at 10. On the flip side, though, especially on the affordability question, and this comes up when communities are so highly regarded and the quality of life is so positive. What folks are telling us, if you look at affordable rental units, 43% indicating there's too few. Starter homes, 48% saying there's too few. Affordable housing, 49%. A lot of these are parents talking about and being concerned, is there a place for their children to live in this community when they come back? That they won't be able to afford it. Now, the full impact of the life cycle housing, though, there's not as much concern as we, if we look at assisted living, nursing homes, and senior housing, 22, 31, and 26 percent saying there's not enough. It's a concern, but not the level of affordability that folks are worried about bringing in the next group of Shoreview residents. And as many of them talked about, they hope it's their children. How committed are they to staying? Uh, very committed. If they're going to upgrade, almost a flat majority say they're very committed, 49%, 76%, either very or somewhat committed. If they're downsizing, they're even more committed. 52% are very committed, 78% so at least somewhat committed. So not only are they they're here, they want their kids to be able to stay here, they also want to be able to stay here, depending on where they are in the housing cycle of their life. Finally, in communications, an overall rating of communications, 90% rated favorably, 9% only fair or poor. Uh, very strong, the norm on this one is 80%. Uh, excellent and good uh, to about 15% only fair or poor. Now, oh, I, that's the last one. Sorry, I thought there was <laughs> one more. Oh well. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Well, this is all fascinating, and I've got a couple questions. That I, um, how many cities do you survey in the metropolitan area? Well, so many cities are on different cycles depending on their life cycle or mm -hmm. their. We, they tend to base it on their growth pattern. You know, there are, there's one community that does a survey every year. Okay. Um, there are some communities that do it every 10 years in that cycle. So we basically hit in the in a 10-year cycle, we hit about 90% of all communities. Now, what we do though, and when we're talking about norms, because with different cycles, 
you know, if one community does one every 10 years um, and one does one every year, uh, we do our own internal survey every spring and every fall on these key questions. And we do it with cities and school districts. So we establish a rating, a norm on quality of life, ratings of mayors and city councils, of city staff, and we can fill in all those gap, gaps, but then have a comprehensive up-to-date look. Okay, yeah. okay. And the, uh, another question I had on the city streets, and uh, I wondered if there's any way for people to understand what are city streets and what are county streets. And we tell them. But it, it, it really is one of those items that, it, it, it was specific in the paragraph, we say don't consider this street and this street, this is county. But it absolutely is coming into play. I okay. mean, because at the end of the day, um, the, the city is the closest point of contact they have. Yep. And stuff goes downstream, shall we say. Right. And uh -huh. th that's part of the evaluation. It right. absolutely comes into the mix. I didn't know if it was part of the question or how you answer yeah. it when people, when people use examples, uh, whether the interviewer knows when the examples are given by the uh, respondent yeah, the, that the, this is not a, even a city street. Yeah. Well, the, the specific question, was, we say for the next set of city services, please consider only their job on city-maintained streets and roads and neighborhoods. That means you should exclude state and county roads such as Highway 96, Highway 49, and Lexington Avenue that are taken care of by other levels of government. Keeping that in mind, how would you rate the following? Excellent, I see. but only for okay. more. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And then my third question, and then I certainly will open for council, but, um, <coughs> and the same on the question on, on property tax and the value of the services. Do you think a lot uh, that people who respond really understand that this is for city services and it isn't a combined property tax with the county and with the school district? Um, they understand the difference. Um, what we found, some cities will ask, uh, what percent do you think goes to the mm -hmm. city out of your total property taxes? Um, and people tend to overestimate what goes to cities, mm -hmm. and they always underestimate what goes to counties yeah. uh, in, in, in their evaluation. So, and we I, don't have that question, we don't have that explanation or that question in our survey, do we? No, because, you know, some will ask it and then we'll, the, we'll tell them the specific, but all, the specific number, only after, though, we've gauged what their feelings are on property taxes because we don't want to educate them and make them atypical. Mm -hmm. This is tapping into their perception. Because most people aren't going to say, hey, I'm angry about property taxes. I wonder what percent goes to the city. I see. They're just mm -hmm. going to be upset. And so we want to capture that or not capture that mm -hmm. in that sense. Okay. Interesting. But it, it is perception. Right. Absolutely. Council, those are all my questions. Do you have some? Council <coughs> Member Quigley, go ahead. No, we'll start with you. environmental, social media influences that seem to be pervasive with people's attitudes. Uh, I'm wondering how much that um, affects the way they respond to these questions. Uh, it, it's been up to me that if a city runs rather smoothly, people tend to ignore its operations. It's kind of like the atmosphere. It's, as long as there's some there, they don't pay much attention. So I'm just wondering how much the, the, the general societal noise affects their responses. And I know that's a fuzzy question, but that's why you're here. Yeah, it's, 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 that one's kind of like tacking jello to a wall. <laughs> but it is, it's an excellent question in the sense. And, and I think you see it in, especially in, I don't have the questions on cable in, the, in this presentation. Um, but there are times when I'll come in and, and present, and you know, just for the for the sake of this for this point, this time around, um, you have uh, you had 52 percent that indicated that they had cable. 
of that 13%, so approximately 7-8% of the community were watching city council meetings. Um, that's actually pretty good. You know, like I've joked before, there are times that I tell councils, your spouses don't even watch you. <laughs> and they'll lament the fact, but it's actually a positive thing because you're absolutely right. The more dysfunction there is, the more likely people are going to be to be watching cable television uh, uh, meetings. Or the more likely they're going to be on social media and everything like that because, you know, quite frankly, in this society, we watch train wrecks. Um, and if everything is going well, we're not going to take the time in order to um, evaluate it. it it's just, um, but that doesn't, the, let's say, though, the overall dysfunction that we see, we did a lot of polling this summer and this fall, not for candidates, but on issues leading into this election. There's, there's a hierarchy of dysfunction the federal government, then the state government, but there is a major gap still when you drop down from the state down to local government. It's why people are willing to sit on the phone with us and play city council member for 31 minutes because they care about their community. The community, you folks, or the school districts that we work with, um, they're kind of insulated for the most part, except for some of those communities that we all know, um, that really have some of that dysfunction in it. Um, it just doesn't trickle down. So if we ask a question on trust, on approval ratings, federal, you know, the, the federal government, the approval rating is approximately 12%. The state, you might hit 30%, depending how much fighting there was and did you have a budget shutdown. You get to council or school boards, you have 55 to 85 percent approval. There really is that gulf. People really do see a difference. I think part of it is elected officials at this level are much more connected to their residents and kind of can't do some of the shenanigans they pull in St. Paul or Washington, D.C., but that's just my opinion. Thank you. Uh, council? Councilmember Dankenshaw. I had a couple of questions. Um, the first one was on street maintenance. And I mean, just knowing the quality of streets in our community, I was, I was surprised to see, you know, some of the more negative response on street maintenance. And what I wondered was, is there a way to separate out or do you have any visibility to what people's concerns might be, for example, to me, if I feel like I'm being put out because my street is under construction for longer than I thought, or if I don't like the type of curbing that my neighborhood has, you know, would those also be part of street maintenance versus the actual quality of the streets? It, it <clears throat> tends to be in pre-testing in pre and over the years. We, we, ha we didn't follow up um, with this one, you know, if you rated it only for a poor why because that kind of gets in, you can then have a 300-question survey. Um, in the past, though, there are two things that people are reacting to when they rate street repair maintenance unfavorably. The number of potholes or issues with the road itself can become an issue, but the greatest impact is how long those issues are there. So it, you can get away, you can have potholes, everybody's going to have potholes after winter. But if they sit there and people are still running their car over them in August, that's the major concern where people then start rating street repair and maintenance only fair or poor. Um, it doesn't tend to get into curbing and everything like that for the most part. That's a generalization though. Okay. And then I had one more question and that was, on public safety, when I think about public safety, I, the speeding yeah. resonates with me and, and also, you know, if you read the local crime reports, auto theft and, you know, who you think might be doing them or um, breaking into cars, for example, is an issue. But I wondered if you're seeing broadly across, or more generally speaking, across cities, a higher 
concern on public safety just based on some of the recent shootings that have happened in the last few years? It's Are you a, seeing a rise in that generally? Not to the level with cities specifically, but in school districts, yes. Con concern on student safety in school districts is um, a, a school district can never be safe enough. That's where it's impacting people's perceptions on public safety so far at this level. Now, crime can become um, suburbanized from what happens in the metro area, absolutely. But that tends to happen, especially in the first ring communities right against. Um, the Minneapolis and St. Paul, where it kind of spills over the border, shall we say. So the concern on the violent crime um, doesn't really go up or down, depending on shootings at this point in time. Now, over the past year, we've had more and more of the public shootings, not so much just in school. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, interesting is the wrong word to use. Mm -hmm. It'll be sad to see whether this translates into a concern on public safety greater than this list at this point in time. Thank you. Yeah. Councilmember Springhorn. Um, you did a nice job of uh, picking out the key indicators for the presentation. I think we're glad we didn't uh, have 190 slides, but I'm just, uh, <laughs> um, a, a particular interest to me, we had a couple questions about whether the community is viewed as welcoming, and I wonder if you uh, can Find that one. Uh, just sure. give me a sneak preview. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing the whole report at some point soon. Sure. The, um, we asked two questions on that. The first one was, do you feel accepted and welcome in the city of Shoreview? We had 98% indicate yes, they did. 2% said no, they did not. We then asked another question, uh, an overall perception, not about you, but do you think the community of Shoreview is welcoming and accepting of people of all colors, races, and religions. 92% indicate yes, they think that's the case. 5% said no, they did not. And 4% said they refused to answer the question. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Mm, that's interesting. Good question. Any other questions? Council Member Johnson? Or I, I just uh, actually had a question related to public safety, but uh, Council Member Dinkinger already asked that. I'm um, just curious in the residents that you spoke to, did, is there a demographic in terms of age and has that mm -hmm. transitioned um, since our last survey? And then it looks like we'll get a chance to dig a little bit more into it at an upcoming mm -hmm. workshop. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure I'll have more questions then. Okay. You know what? I, I could put together, I don't believe I put in the complete. I think there's 66 charts for that work session, so uh, we'll pull out these 30. Um, but if I didn't, I'll put in a demographic comparison over the last, since 2010. Because um, we, have, we have household composition, households with seniors, households with children, uh, home ownership, um, you know, marital status, income, ethnicity, all of those questions. And I, yeah, I think it'd be interesting to see. Good. Good question. Thank you. Council Member Quigley, did you have another question? Uh, the uh, question I had was uh, actually two questions. One is the database you draw from each time that the survey is conducted. What's the mass that you go, that you question? For where do we get the numbers? Yes. Two ways, two, two different ways. For landlines, um, we still, you know, the prefix is coming into the community. Uh, cell phones we purchase less. Um, as long as I promise that um, I'm not going to sell anything, I can get extraordinarily, extraordinary amounts of information down to uh, billing centers, addresses, um, everything like that. No, I don't request that. Um, I just want telephone, uh, cell phone numbers coming into the community, and then we screen for location. And then, you know, the, we just kind of let it, you know, it's basically half and half right now of folks, you know, anywhere between 40 and 50% of households are completely uh, landline free um, and the remainder have either only landline or a combination and we just let them float between the two. The, um, I was wondering about the landline mm -hmm. cell mm -hmm. because they've said a, a huge shift taking place in that uh, basis the um, and 
Any categories that you think we're not covering enough? Uh, that I know that's uh, also, I'm just wondering what else might be of value that you see in these surveys that we don't uh, assess or dig or ask. I think when we do the full survey, um, you cover all the key sections that other communities are looking at. And what I mean, the, the, the every five-year cycle, the 2013, the 2015 is shorter, kind of a dipstick, shall we say, and then come, but when we do that full survey, you know, most communities tend to be in the 160 to 200 question range when they do their major survey. Um, and so, you know, specific questions, I could think of a few, we talk about it at the work session, but as, as topic areas go, you know, are you, mi anything glaring missing? No. When we, uh, I can't remember, do we give the residents a heads up that the survey is coming so they can be prepared to field the calls in a more positive way? I think we do, don't we? Yeah. Our, our city we, do, we do put, um, and, and Renee can comment on this more, but I think we do put information out on our website. Uh, we uh, let people know through social media about the time frame when people will be calling when we know they're going into the field to be prepared in case they get a call. This is not, um, you know, the standard survey. This is something they're doing for their city, and we would appreciate um, them taking the call and setting up times to do the appointments and things. So. And that makes it easier for us and easier for the city getting those right. calls of who are these people and are they legitimate. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, I know we look forward to even uh, examining some of the details better as they, serve the com as they serve the council to see areas that we can work on and areas that might need to be improved. But um, I'm quite pleased with these results and uh, we'll look forward to our, our meeting with you on December 10th. Thank you very much for being here and uh, bringing us all this good information. Wonderful. Happy Thank holiday. You. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. So council that takes us uh, to and, and I do believe that the uh, uh, Morris Leatherman report is going to be uh, taped. It has been taped and we'll be showing that on cable TV so that uh, people who may not have been able to see